era. And Exile's Return talks about the rise of bohemianism and radicalism in New York. And it's, again, a little, sometimes some of it's a little over my head, but it's really interesting. And what I do get, uh, I get. And he's just a great writer. He's a Harvard boy. He's very clear thinking. And, you know, he was there with all this stuff. He was in World War I with E.E. E. Cummings and John Dos Passos and Hemingway. And, you know, he just had quite the time. All right. Now, as, as far as, like, all the different, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to call them, like, mediums or, uh, you know, ways of expressing all that, you know, do you, do you get a... Um you know, do, you, do you get different messages across through, you know, say music and literature and, um, you know, poetry and television or, or whatever? What, what yeah, do you sure. get from it's, each it's, one? Well, the the music is a very visceral, concentrated, physical, you right. know, in thing. It's very direct. There's not many lyrics in a song, you know, word-wise compared to an essay. Right. Um, and so there's that. And it's the ritual that goes with it, the volume, the heat, you know, the intensity of all of it, right. which is quite quite nice. Um, the talking shows give me a lot more latitude in that I'm not wrecking the guitar solo by not shutting up. Right. So I enjoy that, and I enjoy the fact that you can see something on the news that day or something can happen that day, and you can bring it to the stage that night. And it is completely real in the moment. You know, and uh, I love the challenge of that and the potential of it. And so that's what keeps me coming back to the talking shows. Uh-huh. Uh, the writing is the hardest of all of it because it's what, I, it's what I aspire to the most, to be a good writer. And I haven't hit it yet, but I'm working at it. I mean, I, I'm not as good as anybody's writing I respect. Okay. And all my heroes are mostly writers. Uh, you know, if, if, if we could dig up some, you know, four dead guys and, you know, let me talk to them, it would probably be writers before musicians. Okay. Who would they be off the top of your head? Someone. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to, to hang around F. Scott Fitzgerald or uh, Albert Camus. Okay. Um, gee, it'd be interesting to, to hang around uh, someone like uh, Lautrimont or Rambo. Um Dostoevsky or Kafka, you know, just just to to see just how they, you know, what was on their minds, you know, I, or Henry Miller, you know, just someone outrageous. Uh, I just think it's literature more than music that has really uh, ignited a lot of stuff in, over the centuries. And I love music. You know, I, I I worship the likes of John Coltrane and Duke Ellington and the Beatles and you know, lots of good stuff in my record collection far outweighs my book collection or library or whatever. But right. it's I can kind of understand how Lennon and McCartney could write all that good stuff. I can't understand how Kamu pulled off the plague. <laughs> okay. Right. You, you know, and I'm not saying I, I I can write songs like McCartney and Lennon. I just I can kind of get to it more. Oh, four four, nice melody. Uh -huh. Right. But when you get into something like Mark Twain or Shakespeare, that's when you sit there and go, okay, well, how, how the hell did you get that together? Right. And, and, and uh, so it's always been literature to me that's made my jaw drop the most. Okay. A little while back, you're talking about um, you know current events and how, how for your uh, spoken word stuff, you can you know, just take what's going on right at the moment. What, what gets you... You know what gets you going these days? What anything you read well, in the paper this morning? Or um, I think it was there was some great comedy the other day when Saddam came into court. Okay, and he's just not going to answer you, and he doesn't have to tell you who he is. And the smile on the judge's face was great. <laughs> he's like, okay, I knew he was going to be difficult. Christ, this is going to be a long winter. And. You know, Saddam is like, no, 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 and no, I'm the king of Prussia. And the, and the judge is, okay, tough guy. And the, the, their initial, you know, jump in together, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. And the words coming back in translation are, you know, hilarious. They were, so the guy's translating for Saddam, at least on CNN. Saying, I don't. I'm not allowed to have a pen anymore. Apparently, a pen is scary. <laughs> okay, and um, so the whole 
thing was almost John Stewart esque. Right. Uh, in its, you know, the the blunt news was funny in a way. I'm not saying what he what Saddam did or is accused of is funny, uh-huh. but it's just a, an interesting moment watching this guy who's still in a bit of denial, or this is his defense is going to be a good offense, and and you see the same thing happen with Slobodan on Milosevic walk into the court in The Hague. He said, "I don't acknowledge this. This is all bullshit. I, I, you know, I need my country back, and I got to go back to work." Which is what Saddam said. You know, I'm the president of the Republic of Iraq. I don't acknowledge you. I don't acknowledge this court. This is all fiction to me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to start getting pretty real for him, right? And the fact that one of the defense attorneys was just shot in the head overnight um, it underscores that. Yeah, yeah, it was just pretty intense. And so, it's interesting to, to be able to bring that on the stage. I thought the interview with uh, Bashir Bashar al-Assad with Christian Amanpour, which they keep showing parts of all week long, I tra- I watched it fascinated by it. I also trans- uh, got the transcription of it from CNN.com, but I think she's really cool. I'm fascinated by her. Also, it was interesting to see, you know, the Prime Minister or the President, I don't know what they call him, uh, of Syria, weigh in on America, Iraq, and Rafi Kariri. And and so all of that's fascinating to me. I mean, I, I can't tell you how much it interests me. And so I try and bring that on the stage and make it interesting. You can't touch on stuff for that long, uh, that kind of material, is because a lot of people also watch the news, mm-hmm. and you don't want to put them to sleep. And so there's great moments to grab the most poignant parts of it, rip it, and move. Um, and so the fact that current events are moving pretty quickly and explosively at this point, America and China, uh, America and North Korea, uh, America and Iraq and the Middle East. This is, uh, you know, there's good and bad. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe uh, that North Korea may be wanting to come to some kind of table. Because you know, I think there's a lot of people there who could use three square meals a day. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe Kim Jong-il might loosen up the reins a little bit. Uh, I think he fears doing that because then everyone would get a chance to see what he's not told them and what his his father didn't tell them. Right. You know. But um, I was just in South Korea a few months ago, and so it was kind of fascinating to be at least near the border, you know. And um, in your travels, have these been mostly with the the USO? Have you been yeah, going yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what what have, what's been your impression from 